So hello everyone and thanks a lot for joining this session. Uh, my name is Chila Jigri. I'm a VP of strategy at uh, BTP. And uh, Duncan Johnston Watt is the CEO of the company. And uh, we, are, we will be talking about provenance. Um, so I'm sure you are um, I'm sure you are familiar with the term. Uh, often it is still associated with the art world, but uh, when you think about you know, the applicability of you know, being able to record provenance information and share that, um, it can be you know, applied and uh, provide value in so many areas, right? Uh, beyond the art world, so across uh, plenty of industries. And um, just simply put, uh, provenance captures the origin and the life journey of any asset. This obviously includes the ownership history, but it can be any physical or, or digital asset. So what, what, why it matters? I think first and foremost, uh, it provides transparency and trust. And I think we can all agree that, uh, you know, uh, there's, uh, we, we fall short uh, of those things in many areas of life and business. And, uh, for example, you know, you can use uh, this information to uh, fight fraud, uh, contaminations, counterfeiting. Uh, and actually, counterfeiting is a huge problem. I think in 2019, uh, I read somewhere that the global market for fake goods was worth about, I don't know, it was like, I think like $500 billion, which is basically bigger than Ireland's economy. And I think the pandemic aggravated uh, this a bit. So this is an, uh, an area that where, you know, we believe that uh, a prominent solution can help. Also, you know, uh, businesses can use uh, this to um, demonstrate that their product is environmentally friendly, that, you know, it has been produced uh, in a socially and ethically responsible way. And, you know, when you think about uh, supply chains, uh, you can make, uh, all this transparency can uh, make a supply chain more resilient. So that's why we, we are a true believer in, in provenance. We think it is a force for good. And uh, that's why we, uh, we launched a, a product called Chronicle. Uh, that actually, uh, in, well, again, simply put, we, what we're trying to do is just make it easy for organizations uh, to record and query immutable provenance information. And we do that uh, backing, it, uh, backing all this information uh, with a uh, distributed ledger. And it can, you know, we can apply that to any asset in any domain and uh, across multiple parties and industries. So just a, a few words about Chronicle. Again, it's blockchain-backed. It's domain agnostic. It's a product that uh, records and, uh, you can use to record and query provenance information. It is built on the World Wide Web's um, Prov O uh, specification. Uh, it, we also use uh, other open source standards and technologies. I would highlight GraphQL, which is a project that is part of the Linux Foundation. Uh, so we can, uh, again, we can record uh, information about any physical or digital asset. And for now, the backing ledger is Hyperledger Sawtooth. It's a permissioned uh, um, uh, blockchain. And uh, Chronicle is easily configurable. It's domain agnostic, but we can, you can use it uh, uh, to configure. So you, you are able to capture information in specific domains that are you know, uh, important uh, for your business. So you want to take this? Um, yes, and just to reinforce the point, we're here as members of the Linux Foundation. Um, we are members of FINOS uh, and also the LF Energy uh, Initiative. But within the sort of horizontal Linux Foundation initiatives, we're working with, closely with the Hyperledger Foundation, CNCF, and, and of course, GraphQL. Um, in terms of the Prov-O, the, the provenance ontology, um, this is a very abstract but very powerful ontology provided by W3C, um, and it talks about concepts like agents, entities, and activities. So entities are the, 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 the things you want to reason about. Agents are, 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 the, the, are interacting with those entities, and the activities describe uh, the kind of interaction. Now, that's incredibly abstract. So, um, so while we support that, uh, what we've created is, a, is, as part of our Chronicle product, is a, is a way of compiling a domain-specific definition of an ontology so that, as Chilla will show you in a, in, a, in a minute or two, we can reason about in this 
in the context of this uh, conversation about corporate actions. But equally, we could be reasoning about uh, the world of art or the world of critical uh, infrastructure. But the idea is to be able to take a, 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 a YAML file that defines the entities, the agents, and the activities in, in a language which makes sense in your domain. And then, of course, that's then mapped onto the underlying prov-o uh, concepts. The reason we back all this onto a DLT is so that this information is immutable. It doesn't mean it can't be changed, but it means that any change is, is explicitly recorded. So if you're capturing, as we do, the facts of the matter, you want to know what entities are involved, uh, what agents uh, and what activities, you want that stored immutably so that, that nobody can come in and then argue after the fact. Now, when we say record, it's very important to understand that Chronicle records things, but what actually it relies on is systems to actually, uh, you know, essentially mark when certain activities occur and who's involved with that. So we're not doing anything. You know, we're kind of lazy when it comes to that. But what we are doing is capturing the facts of the matter, and that therefore then allows you to uh, not just uh, store those facts using GraphQL, but then run queries. Um, so with that slightly long-winded explanation, I'll pass back to Chilla to talk you through a, uh, a domain uh, around corporate actions. Yes, yeah, so we modeled a specific domain for this event, which is corporate actions. And more specifically, uh, we are recording some aspects of a stock split. I'm sure you know what a stock split is. It's an event focused on finance, uh, but just in case... Uh, it does inc well. The stock split increases uh, uh, the number of shares in a company. And for example, if you think about a two-for-one split, that means that uh, an investor will double the number of the shares that uh, uh, he or she owns, but the value of each share after that uh, event will be halved as well. So what we will model is essentially it's, it's a simplified model. What we will model is three activities. So basically an investor, an individual investor, a person becomes a shareholder in a company, so acquires some shares. Then the company will announce a two-for-one stock split. And after that, a transfer agent, which uh, uh, acts on behalf of a company, will uh, update the shareholding uh, of that individual in investor. So in this, uh, using the, the, the Provo language, the domain is corporate actions. The entities would be, you know, the, the actual, the, the, the shareholding, the announcement, that's the type, you know, type of assets that uh, is being created. The agents would be the company, the shareholder itself, as well as the transfer agent, and the activities would be, you know, acquiring the shares, announcing and implementing a stock split. So this is the first activity which uh, uh, Duncan will, will be demonstrating. So it, this illustrates, as you can see, you know, there's a company, there's a person, they have uh, different roles. The company's role is the, uh, it's the issuer, the, the person is going to be the shareholder, and uh, they, both these agents are associated with an activity, which is uh, the acquisition of shares. And we are going to, uh, and this activity will, will generate a uh, shareholding entity. So let's demonstrate this. Okay, so um, if I now switch to the application, oops, sorry. Um, so what we've got running here, and by the way, this is this is open source, so you can go and look at these chronicle examples. So the one that we're actually uh, playing with today is, is a corporate actions example. So if I just drill down on that briefly, this is the domain YAML, which actually describes the kinds of entities, agents, and activities that we're talking about here. And so it's my job uh, to now capture uh, an instance of a, uh, of a shareholder uh, acquiring a shareholding. So, so once you have this ontology, uh, and by the way, in general, I would not recommend using the uh, uh, the GraphQL playground to do this. This will be being done programmatically more than more more likely than not. But essentially, the first thing that you do is, and hopefully, can you see that? Is that visible to people? Just okay. Sorry. Um, let me see if I can. Hopefully that's a little bit clearer. So, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell Chronicle that there are uh, three agents. There's a company called FTX Corp. 
located in the Bahamas. Uh, there's Ninja Chiller, located, yes, located in Barcelona. And then there's a transfer agent called Bank, which is a bank. See, we're really imaginative folks. We sort of run out of ideas very quickly. So if I run this, what this is doing, bear in mind that stack, is I'm now speaking GraphQL and saying to um, Chronicle, please record the existence of these agents. Okay, so far so good. So now we want to define a, a shareholding acquisition. So that's that first diagram that, uh, that Chiller uh, describes. So what I'm actually doing is, uh, if I go to the right, I'm actually now creating an instance of the shareholding acquired, and I'm going to fill out all of these relationships. So first thing you do is you define uh, the shareholding acquired activity. Um, you're saying that it's associated with two, uh, two uh, entities, well, sorry, two agents, uh, FTX Corp, uh, which is in the role of the issuer, a uh, very reliable firm, of course, uh, and then Ninja Chiller, who thinks this is a brilliant, brilliant deal, deal of the century. So, um, so we'll set this up. Uh, and now that we've, now we've defined this activity, we have to do uh, something else, which we actually have to say, it's, it's now going to happen instantaneously. So you can have activities in Prop that show that have that, that lasts over a, a, an amount of time. So, for example, in manufacturing, you might begin a manufacturing process, then manufacture a batch of items, and then finish that process. But here, it's, a, it, it's, it's an instantaneous activity of acquiring a shareholding. Uh, so Chiller, Ninja Chiller uh, is, going to, is going to acquire 100 top-quality shares with a nominal value of uh, $1 from FTX. So if we do that... So what we've done is we've essentially, we've, we've taken what is obviously an abstract model, and now within Chronicle, we can actually sort of uh, model each of these different scenarios. So now back to you to look at the next one, I guess. Thank you. So now I have become a shareholder in FTX. I don't know if, whether that's a good idea or not, but that's what happened. And now FTX is going to announce a stock split. Right, so in this scenario, there's only one agent. Is the company is FTX Corp. In our example, and is going to uh, announce this uh, two for uh, one stock split. And as you can see, uh, the announcement itself it's an entity, and it's it has some attributes that we are going to also show uh, through Chronicle. It has a ratio which is two for one. It has a rec record date, a pay date, and an X date, and so on. So. Uh, this uh, entity was uh, uh, generated by that uh, split announce activity, and obviously, in this case, it's only the company who's associated with it. So, thank you. So, <clears throat> so defining the split announcement, you'll you'll see a pattern emerging here very quickly, in that we're defining an activity, we're saying who it's associated with. So again, it's FTX Corp in this instance, and then we'll record the actual uh, split announcement, which is um, uh, saying that there will be a two for one. Uh, the record date is today, the pay date is tomorrow, and the X date attribute is the day after tomorrow. I don't know who came up with this, but uh, um, <clears throat> anyway, so we do all that. So now, so now what, what have we done? So to recap, we, Ninja Chiller has a shareholding. Uh, we've recorded that fact. Uh, we've also recorded the fact that there has been a uh, share, share stock split announcement. And so the final thing is to then process that. Uh, and so here, it's the same idea. Uh, we now have uh, the company involved. This is still FTX Corp. We now have, though, the, the, in the role of a registrar, the transfer agent. Um, the shareholding, and this is important, uh, will be revised as a result of this. So where you see there was a revision of uh, what that's saying is essentially you've now mutated uh, shareholding from uh, one version to the next version. So this, this is how you build up over time the complete sort of timeline or history of, of this kind of activity. So in the interest of time, and I've lost track of time, but I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's getting perilously close to you guys uh, getting a, a, a drink of some description, um, we are going to go through exactly the same process as before, it's a little more complex, the number of participants involved, but, uh, but we're defining um, the shareholding updated activity. We're saying that there is a bank involved in the role of the registrar. Um, 
uh, FTX is the, it, it's, it's acting on behalf of uh, FTX Corp, uh, again, as the registrar. And here we're saying that uh, it's, it's also using, as part of this activity, the existing shareholding and the announcement. So this is building up that picture again of, of the state of the world. So if I, if I do that. Um, and then finally record the actual update itself. And so this is where we're saying the revised shareholding is a revision of the original shareholding. And now we have, uh, that should be 200. I'm just going to, 200 rather than two. Um, uh, uh, at, uh, at, a, at a nominal or par value of, of 50 cents. So if we do that, uh, what we've now done is uh, we can now query this, and this, I promise you, is the last bit of GraphQL Playground. And if we run this query, then what we can see is, is the timeline of activity. So, uh, so you can see the split announced, uh, you can see the shareholding acquired, and you can see... Uh, where is it? The shareholding updated. So, so that's that is basically uh, the end of the demonstration. So this has been published on the uh, on the in, in the schedule, so you can grab these slides if you want. Most importantly, though, I would I would commend you to go and actually look at the examples and. There's a full readme telling you how you can actually build these examples out. And, uh, and once you've done that, uh, you, you can run an in-memory version of Chronicle, so you're not actually having to roll out a distributed ledger on a Kubernetes cluster somewhere in the cloud. You can actually just experiment and, and iterate on, on and create your own, your own domain. So the idea here is to create these examples to seed the idea of using Chronicle to actually capture provenance across multiple different uh, domains, so art world, uh, uh, critical infrastructure and so on and so forth. And, um, and I will have to put in a pull request because the readme is out of date. So this is the joys of being in the open, okay? So uh, it's warts and all. So, but thanks again for your time. If you've got any questions, of course, we're here to answer. Otherwise, I think it's time for a booth crawl. Thank you. Sorry. Um, uh, you, can, you can revise things. What you can't do is, is delete things. So, so immutability is not the same as, as saying something is, is you're fixed for all time. So you make a mistake. It cannot be, it cannot be uh, amended. You can make an amendment. But what you've done is you've recorded both the original and any update. So, so that, that's a feature of, uh, of really the, the, this approach is that you can't just sweep things under the carpet pretend something didn't happen or change something after the fact. So, um, so it's one of the, sorry? Uh, you no, you've, you, you've recorded a change, but you have the full audit trail of the original and the updates. You can actually see that. So in other words, it's completely transparent. So we're not saying you have to get it right first time and it, God forbid you don't. What we're saying is it's fully transparent. So any, any mutation, I can, you know, I can create a mutation, but the previous mutation is still there. And when you run the timeline or run more sophisticated queries, you will actually see each step of the way. So, so it's important to distinguish between the two. So immutability means it's tamper-proof. You can't change it on the fly. Um, and that's thanks to the consensus algorithm that's, that's enforcing that uh, across the DLT. Good question, though. Um, any more questions? If not, thanks again, and enjoy uh, the, the, the booth crawl, and thanks.